The Argus II Retinal Prosthesis, FDA approved in 2013, first implanted at the CUI Center November 2015 by Dr. Naresh Mandava and Dr. Scott Oliver. Retinitis pigmentosa is a disease without a cure. It causes night blindness, tunnel vision, and in some cases complete loss of vision. The Argus II artificial retina is the first device of its kind intended to turn the lights back on. Shown here is the processing unit and the antenna which are placed on an encircling band around the globe. The band is passed under the extraocular muscles in a fashion identical to placing a scleral buckle. A Watsky sleeve is placed supranasally. Critically important is placement of the suture tabs. The distance from limbus to suture tab placement is based upon the axial length of the eye. Another anchoring suture is placed infrotemporally to anchor the antenna. Mattress sutures are placed in a standard fashion in the other quadrants to secure the band to the globe. For phacic patients, a pars planar lensectomy is then performed in a standard fashion, taking care to achieve complete sonulectomy and capsulectomy. Corneal epithelium can be debrided if necessary. Great care must be taken in manipulating the flat cable that's attached to the electrode array. An MVR blade is used to make a sclerotomy, which is then widened to an appropriate width using a shortcut blade. Next, rubber-tipped forceps are used to carefully deliver the electrode array into the vitreous cavity. The cable is gently advanced until it is flat against the globe. Anchoring sutures are used to begin closing the sclerotomy. An additional trocar is placed to allow for chandelier illumination. The electrode is gently placed on the macula in an appropriate position. The specialized tack insertion tool is used to remove it from the tack block. The tack is then advanced through an open sclerotomy into the vitreous cavity. Forceps are used to fixate the electrode array while the tack is advanced first through the fixation eyelet in the electrode array and then through retina and sclera. The tack cannot be repositioned after this maneuver. The insertion tool is carefully removed from the tack. Finally, the sclerotomy wound must be rendered watertight. In this case, this is achieved using proline suture passed in a purse string fashion through sclera and around the cable. Once the wound is assured to be watertight, then the entire device must be covered with tutoplast. It is carefully anchored at the limbus, then trimmed to an appropriate size and deposited underneath conjunctiva. Similarly, tutoplast is placed infrotemporally to cover the antenna for the device. Subsequently, silk ties will be removed and conjunctiva closed in a standard fashion similar to scleral buckling surgery. Postoperatively, the electrode array is inspected to assure that it is oriented correctly in a diagonal fashion across the macula. Multiple imaging modalities can be utilized to assure good apposition of the electrode array with the inner retinal surface. Postoperative healing proceeds for one month prior to programming the device and turning it on.